Hi, welcome to this tutorial which is uh, essentially about uh, color encoding in 3D models which is a kind of a general concept but uh, we will have a look at a few features of MeshLab that gives you the possibility to visualize and control this color encoding. Um, so this first model I'm showing on screen uh, is made by nearly 3 million, 3 million triangles and in this case we have a colored model and the color is encoded in the color per vertex fashion. In the color per vertex, the color is stored in the context uh, of the geometry, in the sense that each vertex of the, the, of the model uh, is assigned to a color value. So uh, each vertex of the 3D model has, uh, in addition to the position and usually normal attribute, it has also the color attribute. So if I'm switching the visualization to the points only, you can see that the color is still present because it's stored in the, in, the, in the points. So the color per vertex has some advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage with this is that the color per vertex is a quite compact, compact uh, way of saving the color in the sense that the color information is stored in the context of the geometric information so you don't need any kind of further information. And so this can be extremely useful in a number of cases and also some of the information from the, of the operation that you can uh, perform on the 3D model uh, become much much easier if you have the color per vertex. The main weak point about that is that uh, the quality of the color is strictly related to the resolution of the model in the sense that if you have a fine detail in the color that you want to visualize on the model you will need a lot of points and a very resolute model. The points must be very near one respect to the other. Uh, this means that if you want to have a model that maybe doesn't have a lot of geometric detail but if you want to keep the color detail you will uh, have to save a model with a lot of triangles, very small triangles. And this could be a problem when you want to visualize that for example on a laptop. So in this case uh, with the 3 million triangles we can get quite a lot of uh, color information but this is not always the case especially when you're dealing with bigger models and bigger real objects. I'm switching now to another object. This is a uh, same uh, object, but in this case we have some um, object which is made by one million triangles, but the color is encoded in another way. It's encoded through the texture mapping. So in the texture mapping, the color is not encoded in the context of the geometry, but it's uh, encoded uh, in ex an external file, which is essentially an image. And then this image is uh, mapped on the 3D model. So uh, when you want to um, try to understand how the color is encoded in a model, in this, you can uh, have a look here in the lower part of the screen. You can see here that this model, it has the color per vertex because even if you remove the texture, we will see that it's uh, colored in white. So this, uh, this model has both the color per vertex, but it also has the, the wedge texture coordinates. This means that uh, the color, uh, this, uh, this particular model, uh, it has a parameterization. What is the parameterization? Essentially, the parameterization is the function that maps this 2D image where, where we store the color on the 3D model. So it gives you the correspondence, uh, essentially, of each pixel of the image on the surface of the 3D model. So if we go in render, show UV text param, you can have, even in the context of mesh visualization, of the texture image that is mapping on the model. So the parameterization essentially assigns each 2D coordinates of the texture on the 3D coordinates of the model. This parameterization uh, is not so easy to be calculated and uh, this is probably the main weak points of texture map because it has clearly a very big advantage that is to say that if since you are map mapping something which is continuous on a, on a surface, even if you have a model which is not very resolute, even if it has very big triangles you can store the detail of color information also inside the triangle. So uh, you can have a very high detail uh, of color even with models with a low geometric detail. The problem, uh, coming back to the problems of texture mapping, is that you need to have this kind of parameterization. Well, the parameterization is not very easy to be uh, calculated, especially in an uh, automatic way, and especially when you're dealing with quite complex objects. This one is not 
so complex, but anyway, could be quite a mess to automatically calculate parameterization. Um, there are other tools, even freeware one like uh, Blender, where you can uh, um, calculate the parameterization in a semi-automatic way, and there are a few ways uh, also in MeshLab to do that. One uh, it has already been shown on another um, tutorial, and uh, it was this parameterization is uh, was obtained with this filter, with it, which is the parameterization plus texturing fixed filter, which essentially starts from a set of images which are already aligned to the model. But there are other ways. So essentially, texture mapping it's very good because you can have. Uh, a very high detail of color regardless of the resolution of the of the model but you have to calculate the parameterization in some way if i switch back uh, just one last thing when you're visualizing a model with a, a texture if you switch to the point visualization clearly you're losing also the color information because the color information is mapped on the triangles so if you're not visualizing the triangles anymore you don't see the the, the color information but you can switch on and off the texture by clicking on this button. If we can see that if we switch back, switch off the texture, we can see that the color is white in the sense that we have the color per vertex already in this model, which is a, a which has assigned a white value to each vertex of the model. If I switch back to the original one, the one with color per vertex, you see here that the attributes which are assigned to the model are uh, vertex quality and vertex color. So we, here we can see what, that we don't have a texture and you see also that this button is not um, on and uh, we have a color per vertex. So the color is stored as color per vertex. So this is a very brief introduction on the color encoding. Uh, please take in mind that this is quite important and every time that you want to store the color information you really need to understand which is the best encoding for your particular case and uh, when you're dealing with texture model, there are a lot of times where I where we get uh, uh, questions about uh, uh, why um, when you start from models which are textured, single models which are textured, you put them together like uh, making the flat and visible layer or just making any kind of remeshing method, you are losing the color information. Well, essentially, every time that you make a flat and uh, visible layer or remeshing operation, you are changing the the geometry of the model so you would need to completely recalculate the parameterization and that's why you're losing the texture information so you need to be careful with that because if you lose the parameterization you have to recalculate that and then there are ways in MeshLab to retrieve the color information from the original data but this is not very trivial I will try in the future to uh, post some new tutorials on how to calculate the parameterization and please bear in mind that uh, uh, another solution is always to bring the model outside in some kind of modeling software like Blender and uh, make the parameterization, calculate the parameterization in a semi-automatic way. Uh, otherwise, um, there are some ways in MeshLab, but uh, we still need to make them more robust, especially when dealing with very complex models with lots of triangles. Thanks a lot.